Hi friends, in this video I'm gonna introduce a cheap USB to serial converter. If I show it up closely, this is the top view and the converter chip is the MCP2200 from Microchip. And this is the bottom view. So as you can see I have used both sides of the PCB to mount the components. I decided to use a USB mini connector for this board. Uh, so this blue LED shows the USB or power connection. The next step I will send and receive some data and I will decode the data using the oscilloscope. So stay tuned. Alright, welcome back to the test bench. I have made all necessary connections. These blinking LEDs shows the transmission and reception of the data. This Arduino board transmit the data to the computer and I have used the Siglent 2102X Plus oscilloscope to decode the data. So the signal is pretty clean actually and it has decoded as my Vanitar ASCII characters. In this side, the computer says that it receives the Arduino transmitted data flawlessly and completely. I should say when I was testing this board, I didn't see any USB connection drop, so I can say it works quite stable. In the next step, I will move the camera forward and I will show you how you can decode the serial data by the oscilloscope. Alright, now I can show you the oscilloscope screen clearly. The first thing I should do is to adjust the input coupling of the channel. So I select the channel 1 and change the coupling from AC to DC, like this. The signal blinks on the screen, so I should change the trigger from auto to normal. Now the signal is pretty stable and you, as you can see it's quite clean actually and noise free. If I play with the time division, you can see what I mean. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is to decode the signal, so I press analysis and decode, I should turn this on bus operation. Then I should change this bus protocol. It is not I2C, it should be set on UART. Then uh, protocol signals, which is already correct, channel 1RX and protocol config. Uh, there I should fix the baud rate to 9600. The decoded data is in the hex format. I like to change it to ASCII. So I should come back from here and go to bus display and change this hex to ASCII. Alright, the decoded characters are not correct. I think I should fix something. I'm not sure what is it. So I come again here, go to protocol, not, uh, not here, protocol config. Oh yes, idle level which is wrong. As you see in the signal the idle is high but in the config I forgot to set it on high. And there we go. Now the data has been decoded correctly as you can see at the bottom of the screen. If I play with the time division you can see the signal and decoded data. The next thing I'm gonna show you is the result list. Here it is and let me turn it on and there we go. The first column is the timing and the second column is the decoded data and each row represents a character. I can scroll using this knob also. So you have two options, using the touch screen or using this knob. Very nice actually. The next thing I'm gonna show you is the output logic because this converter can provide both 3.3 and 5 volts logic okay so this is a 5 volt and this is the 3.3 volt logic and there is no change in the decoded data or the uh, signal okay let me come back to the 5 volts logic and you can change between these two by changing changing a jumper on the PCB so you would not have any problem if your target device only supports 3.3 or 5 volts logic. 
All right, welcome back. Uh, these pictures show the PCB layout of the circuit. Uh, the, uh, the red color show the top layer and the blue color show the bottom layer. So this is a two layers PCB board and all component packages are SMD. When I was decided to design this PCB board, I realized that I don't have the schematic symbols and PCB footprints of IC1 and REG1. So as usual, I decided to go with the database of Symaxis component libraries and install the missing libraries using the Symaxis free tools. The good news is that all of these component libraries are free and they do follow industrial IPC footprint standards. To install the libraries, you can either visit the componentsearchengine.com and download the component libraries and import them in your electronic design and CAD software, or use the Symaxis CAD plugins and directly search and install the component libraries in your designing environment. Symaxis has provided plugins for all of these electronic designing CAD software in the picture, such as Altium, KiCad. Orcat, Eagle, Proteus, Easy EDA, and others. I use Altium Designer, so I use the Altium CAT plugin to directly search and install the component libraries. Okay, this is the assembled PCB board, and as it is clear, I have used both sides of the PCB to mount the components. The PCBs have been fabricated by the PCB Way company. I got 10 boards for just $5. The quality of the copper, solder mask, and silk screen are just perfect. I had absolutely no problem with soldering the components. I have provided the schematic and more details in the article, so just please visit the article link in the video description. Okay friends, if you remember I said that MCP2200 is at least twice more cheaper than its similar FTDI chip, okay? So this website ComponentSearchEngine.com is a nice place for such a comparison in a short period, of, in a short time, okay? So let me search for uh, MCP2200 and show you, show you the price. Press the search button. And there we go. From the search results, I think the first one is okay. So let me click on that. And there we go. The component library is also available here. Let's click on the schematic symbol. can see that PCB footprint this one and the 3d model okay this one is Pretty nice actually. And directly we can see the Mauser price here. It says $2.04. By pressing this button, you can find the price of the components in other distributors, and this up button is to download the datasheet of the components. So now I press this button to see what happens. Okay, all of the available well-known distributors are listed here. This one is Arrow. Uh, it says 1.94 for one for the quantity of one. Uh, DigiKey says 2.03 for the quantity of nine. This is the price of the vertical. Avnet, it seems, uh, Okay, Avnet is here. Uh, 
for how many quantity I'm not uh, yes the mean order is 228 so let's see what the mean quantity of one for example this funnel it says for one is 2.14 RS component says 1.98 Mauser says 2.04 for the quantity of one there are many other well-known distributors that you can check uh, so okay this was the price of MCP 2200 what about its similar FTDI chip let me search for that so FT 2232RL let's see what we can find okay this is the search results and this one I think it should be okay uh, so the short description of the component schematic symbol PCB footprint and the 3d model So this one is the schematic symbol. Anyway, you can check for this yourself. Look at here. The direct price in the Mauser is $4.5. So this component is at least twice more expensive. More than twice actually. Uh, so let's check the prices in other distributors. Oh yeah, Arrow says 4.5 for 1, GGK says 2.62 for the quantity of 2000, yeah, not 1, for quantity of 2000, uh, oh yes, here GGK says 4.499 or 4.5 for the quantity of 1, Here was the price for the quantity of 3, again, oh yeah, even more expensive for the quantity of 1, 4.62. And pretty nice, they actually, you can continue this, this list. And as we saw earlier, the Mauser distributor provides 4.5 for the quantity of 1. So as you see, this is a very nice and neat website. I have bookmarked this ComponentSearchEngine.com website in my browser so anytime I can access the website quickly and easily. And yes, finally, this picture shows the connections and wiring diagram. So I don't think you face any problem with connections, everything is clear in this picture. Okay friends, I hope you like this project. You can always support me by sharing the video and of course your subscription. Also, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.